Young leaders and activists from around the world are in Northern Ireland to hash out solutions to important global issues. And they're not alone. They're being mentored and advised by a host of influential political business and sport personalities, plus humanitarians as well. And one of the councillors this year is Hasina Safi, who is former acting minister of Women's Affairs of Afghanistan. Welcome to CNA, Madam Hasina. It is very nice to meet you. I'm just going to outline the themes of this year in Belfast. Education, climate change, food shortages, mental health and peace and reconciliation. I want to ask you which of these you will be advocating as councillor and what do you hope to achieve? Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, uh, also the role that you are playing to uh, pass out the message for young world, which is really needed not only for the young world delegates here, but around the world. I think the five themes which uh, one young uh, one young has prioritized this year uh, for myself um, due to the circumstances uh, of my country, of the region, and of the globe, uh, m most and majority of them are priority, such as education, such as um, peace and reconciliation, such as mental health. I think they are all interlinked together. Uh, to bring up to uh, a result uh, for a stable in one uh, world where we can all connect and we can feel each other's pain and each other's uh, sufferings and also join hands to move forward in a circle of one young, one world of care and kindness. I know things are challenging where you come from, but I appreciate that you have so much hope in your voice there. What lessons are you going to take away from your experience in Afghanistan that you think will be particularly useful for the youth today, in particular the young women you're going to meet in Belfast, not just in the countries facing strife, but also those who come from developed economies, Madam Hasina? Yes. Uh, I think uh, their experience, uh, their dedication, their passion, uh, the affirmation of objectives and visions in order to connect and understand each other's situation, regardless of what situation we are. Uh, and uh, we really have to, as an elder generation, as a generation who uh, have been um, uh, experiencing more uh, times uh, of achievements, uh, of failures, uh, it's uh, an opportunity to share with them and give them more uh, of uh, the platform realities in order to move forward and bring back uh, the stability which is almost vague around the world uh, um, with youth. I'm sure you're looking forward to connecting with plenty of young people in Belfast. But I want to talk about what's happening in your country, the deteriorating conditions for women mm -hmm. there. How frustrating is it to see the efforts of your women's ministry, where you stepped in as acting minister, to be unraveled some two years since mm -hmm. the Taliban offensive? Uh, I think it's not uh, frustrating only for me as a woman and women minister, but it's frustrating uh, for all uh, the population of Afghanistan who struggled for freedom, who struggled for rights, who struggled uh, to reside as someone who needs uh, special circumstances as a human being. Uh, and then to come more down to women and children, I think uh, today the frustration is that women are totally erased uh, from all social, uh, cultural, traditional, uh, and economical spheres of life, um, starting from their own uh, house, their own yard, being imprisoned uh, until the community and the society. Uh, basically, it's uh, three categories of uh, women. The, the one category is the women who have never been out and who have never been uh, contributing to the society, which means that it doesn't matter for them. The second category is the women uh, like me, who you see around the world that today they are struggling and they are voicing out their messages 
to remember Afghan women and to stand with them because imagine, put yourself, put your daughters in a situation that they are ready in the morning to go to the school and suddenly the school doors are shut in front of them, which is a, a place where they can get together, they can connect, they can learn from each other and they are the future generation. In the third category is the very big number of widows and the orphan children, which as a result of uh, the uh, 40 years of war, and more specifically 20 years, uh, they are uh, dependent uh, on uh, the system. They are dependent on, on uh, the economic opportunities, which unfortunately is not getting uh, to them the way they had to uh, it has to get starting from their movement, mobility to going to a doctor. They are not allowed to go without a male uh, escort. Uh, unfortunately, if there is no male escort, how can they uh, take a child who gets sick or unwell in the middle of the night? Uh, the same thing, there is no address, uh, such as uh, women ministry, uh, women that NGOs who were working for the rights of women, uh, in many other institutions uh, which have been working uh, in relation to support women with development, with uh, the domestic violence cases, uh, with the contribution. The women of Afghanistan really started from a very uh, grassroots platform of awareness. They moved to participation, they moved to advocacy, meaningful participation. It was the right time. Uh, to integrate and uh, set and plan and design for the coming generations of women in Afghanistan, in the region, in the globe, because it does not matter where you are. Uh, all women around the world have the same situation, but the structure is different, uh, the phase is different, uh, the complications of the situation is different. So, uh, unfortunately, it has been a terrible last two years uh, after the uh, takeover of the de facto uh, structure. Uh, but the women of Afghanistan, as you witness, are not hopeless. We are firm and uh, we are very much used to living with challenges. Uh, we will move forward. And uh, I'm sure that there are partners like One Young World uh, and so many other dedicated and connected, uh, committed partners who stand with the women of Afghanistan and voice out, not only for the women of Afghanistan, but for women in the female generation around the world. Well, certainly you are a vision of all those hopes. Thank you very much. I'm sure all your experiences and stories will encourage people at the summit to catalyze positive change. It's been lovely speaking with you, Hasina Safi, former acting minister of women affairs of Afghanistan.